John's much taller than me. Um, so I think that's better. Can everyone hear me? Great. I'm going to go fast because there's probably going to be a lot of Q&A here. Um, if anything doesn't make sense, um, save it for Q&A. And please fill out the reviews afterwards. It, it means a great deal. Turn your phones off. If I hear it, I'm going to single you out and shame you. Uh, John said games as a service isn't dead, and he's wrong. Uh, for, the vast majority, for the vast majority of you in the audience, oh, it's definitely dead. Like 90%, 95% of you, it's totally dead. So we'll talk about how to adapt to that reality. Before we start, I'm Mike. Uh, I'm the CEO of Iron Horse Games. We're a publisher, and by we, I mean me, my infant son, and my darling devoted wife. Uh, we've generated 1.2 million installs across seven titles since December. Most of our titles, uh, with one exception, are in open beta, and I'm gonna be talking about that a lot today. Um, we have one title that's launched. You can find it right now in Google Play. It's being featured, Idle Sword 2. It's awesome. Uh, we started publishing games in December, so we've done a lot of organic traffic in a short amount of time, and I'm gonna try and do my best to explain how we've done that. Well, the title got your attention, that's why you're all here. Games as a Service is dead if you're trying to do games as a service once you're live. Um, you can still apply the methodology with some tweaks that I'm gonna give you, you just have to do it before you globally launch. This presentation uh, is largely about how to maximize installs in open beta and what metrics to focus on once you get those installs into your game. First, for those who don't know, Games as a Service is uh, the, basically the operation of the title once it's out. Uh, with, a, with a goal of improving your retention and monetization metrics. Um, usually there's some weaknesses around those that folks try and shore up once they're out. The ideal situation that you're trying to achieve with games as a service is you're making enough money from the title to support the team that's working on it and also to afford marketing. It's probably a handful of you guys in here who are in that position, but the vast majority of game developers are not. Concept was first introduced in the heady days of MySpace and Facebook, and also Pogo, which I'm not gonna talk about that much because that was actually before my time. Um, these were social web-based platforms that were defined by virality. Um, if you weren't there, oh, that was awesome. Like you could just hoist a game up on Facebook and boom, 14 to 15 million active users in the first month for nothing, no feature. No marketing spend, you were just getting traffic like crazy doing nothing. Uh, the best games on the platform, the ones that were at the top in terms of DAU, were about 20 to 30 million daily active users, one to five on MySpace. Uh, there was strong retention driven by casual titles, so everyone remembers those notifications that your crops are withering. Those had uh, a twofold purpose. The first, obviously, was to get you to tell your friends to come help and unwither your crops and drove K factor on the games. But the second one, which is really important, people forget all the time, is it is a reminder to come back and play the game. If you have any games on Facebook Instant Games, you should be abusing the notifications. That is the whole purpose of those notifications, to get people back into the game. Anyway, that's a separate talk altogether. So why do the games thrive there? Well, teams were operating uh, games with massive DAU. So you're talking 1 million, 5 million daily active users for large games. Small changes uh, in your metrics could mean big changes in your daily revenue numbers. Marketing, again, was a factor, but it was a small one. Why is it different on mobile? So raise your hand if you just hoisted a game up on iOS or Android and got 12 to 13 million installs, and then everyone in this room is going to attack you. That's right, it doesn't happen. Um, there's a much heavier reliance on user acquisition outside of the gates. If you don't get platform support and or you don't have a massive marketing budget, you're kind of dead in the water. The crazy thing about it, and the reason I wrote this talk in the first place, is that games as a service, as a concept, is the same. So we've changed platforms entirely. The presence of massive use users coming into your game for free doesn't exist, but we still operate games the same way we did back on Facebook and MySpace with the same assumptions that are built in. This has to be adjusted for mobile. Before we do that, we're going to talk about what mobile conditions look like now. Last July, uh, we, I, I published a game called Idle Empires on iOS and Google Play. We're going to look at pre and post install numbers here around the launch. This first bump is us going out on open beta, so we got some pretty good users there. Second bump is us getting featured. The third bump is sadness. It's just, a plat it's just a plateau of nothing. Apple looks the same, but with less users. We got one big bump from features. Don't get me wrong, getting featured is awesome on both platforms. Without it, I don't think many of our businesses would exist. 
um, but it is a zero-sum game. So this is what our money looked like uh, on Google Play and Apple as well. So basically, if you get installs, you're making money. If you don't get installs, you're not making money. It's simple as that. So what does that mean for games as a service? Well, it means you get most of your installs and most of your money early. And I mean real early, first couple weeks, first month of the game being launched. What's not being shown on those charts is the fact that your early cohorts are your most valuable. So folks think that, oh, there's just an endless amount of users who are interested in my game out there and I just need to find them. It's not true. It's not true at all. Like there is a finite number of users that are into your game. And the further that you get away from them, the less valuable they get. They're just not into you. Refeatures, I know a lot of folks in here are like, oh, well, I'm gonna get a refeature, so screw you, Mike, I'm much smarter than you. Well, joke's on you, that's seven to 10% of the initial installs you saw from your first feature, nothing. I mean, it's really a small amount of installs. Uh, you need to be in a position where you're applying uh, games as a service before you get live to capture the maximum of value for the maximum value from users that you're going to get. So there's a silver lining. We're actually in the best time ever in terms of tools and access to potential users in open beta. So I've been doing publishing, I don't know, six, six years, something like that. Um, and I've been in free to play for a bit longer than that. Um, and having access to these users is kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity right now and it's better than it's ever been. Um, Google Play Open Beta is a great source and kind of the only source for these users that exist on mobile today. Um, if you'll take a look at any of my games that are out right now in Google Play, they're all in open beta, and there's a reason for that. It's because I know how to get installs there. And I'm going to tell you how to get installs there and what to do with them to prepare for your inevitable launch and all the money that you're going to make, or some small subset of you will. So why open beta? Folks who don't know, open beta is a state that you can put your game into on Google Play. Um, when you're in open beta, you can designate the game to be available to anyone, anywhere that has the link to download it. What a lot of people don't know is you can still rank in keywords when you're in open beta, which is awesome. Um, you can still rank in, for instance, in Idle Sword 2, we rank, I think, one or two in incremental RPG, and we've done so for almost the entire duration uh, that we were in open beta. You still get listed in store listings, so this is something that a lot of folks don't know either. You can still be listed in games that are recommended for you, games you might like, simulation games. Um, the benefits are you don't have ratings, so your game doesn't get a rating, um, which is actually good because you're gonna be changing the game quite a bit in the early days, and you don't wanna be saddled with a low, low rating as a result of those changes, and users being upset with you for all those changes. And finally, you don't have a chart position, which sounds bad, but wait, there's something on Google Play called New Free Games. If you don't know what it is, it's a special chart that exists on Google and it doesn't exist on iOS. You are there for 30 days once you release globally uh, in a specific geo. So if I were to release today in the US, I'd be on this chart for 30 days. Your position on the chart is determined by the velocity and volume of installs that you get. You do not, I repeat, you do not want to be on this chart if your game is not ready to maximize the value that you're going to get from the installs on this chart. So. Uh, the chart on the left is what it looks like when your game is found, found quote unquote by Google. So one to two weeks after you open up into open beta, Google will find your game and start putting it into category lists. Um, those are the lists I was talking about before and I'll detail that further. So you have two weeks, two weeks to prepare for these installs. The question is what do you do? You should prep for the algorithm to the best of your ability by improving page conversion rates, optimizing your ASO. Um, so I'm going to go through these in detail, um, but essentially you're looking at optimizing the store art for your icon, uh, you're localizing your store page descriptions, screenshots, A-B testing screenshots, and working on your preview. And there's a bunch of kind of tricks and catches here, and I've done my best to detail them all as we go forward. So for those who don't know, uh, store conversion rate is how effectively your page on the left, on my left, uh, you can see Idle Sword 2, that's our sword it converts users at a rate of 15%, which is okay. Um, I've seen numbers that are much higher. On more casual games, you can look at 40, 50, 60% for your conversion rate, and on much uh, more hardcore games, which with a limited audience, that can be as low as five to 6%. 
So eye contest are the first and most important thing that you can do on your game. Um, you need to test big variations here. So for instance, uh, the skull that's showing on the icons, if you tested those against each other, you're really not gonna get too much statistical significance between the two, they're almost identical. You need to test big variations that are representative of what your game is about. If you think about it, if you're misrepresenting your game through the icon, people clicking on the icon are gonna hit your landing page and the jig's up. They're gonna find out what kind of game you've got. So you're just gonna suffer in terms of conversion rate. So don't lie, tell them what the game is about, and put forth some interesting marketing art for them to look at. We run A-B tests on our icons and yielded a 24% uh, increase in our installs as a result. This is no joke, it's real installs. It's a relatively minor change that you can do. It's cheap from an art perspective. You need to rotate these every two to four weeks. If you're aggressive, you should be doing it every one to two weeks. The way you should think about it is when, a lot of you are probably too young for this, but there are department stores, and department stores have display windows, like Macy's or Bloomingdale's. When you walk by them, they put attractive, interesting setups in their store window to get you to come in. And even if they create the most amazing, alluring store window, it's gonna get old after time. It is them marketing to you to come into the store. Your store is the same thing. It is a marketing asset. Even if you're not spending a dollar in user acquisition, you're still marketing as far as your store is concerned. And last but not least, retest your old icons. Old icons don't remain old icons for long. Just because they didn't perform in the past doesn't mean that they won't perform in the future. So rotate those in. So your feature graphic, this is another important one. So we've run tests and seen a 10% increase in our installs. If you think about it, that's the first thing you see when you hit the page, is the feature graphic, which is the background to your preview video, and the icon. Those two need to work well together, um, but it is also a big marquee image um, that you see at the top of your page. You should rotate this every two to four weeks. Add a preview, so we saw a two percentage point lift in our conversion rate just by adding a preview video. These aren't that expensive, it's roughly three to 4K if you don't have an artist on staff that can do it for you. Uh, you can always talk to a marketing company, I'm sure there's a ton of marketing folks in here right now kind of sneaking down in your chairs, but they will make one for you. Literally, they all have these SDKs, you're all getting emails about it constantly to integrate their SDKs. Ask them to make a marketing video for you. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna be better than anything you can do because they are a marketing company and this is a marketing creative. You can rotate these scenes around for a quick refresh as well. So basically what you can do is take the last scene and put it first and your first scene and put it last and that is a new video, at least as far as short attention spans on the platform are concerned. There is a catch. So this is one of the weird peculiarities of the Google Play Store. So on Google Play, if you don't have a preview video, there are sections of the store where your game will not appear, period. You'll never get there. You have to have a preview video to be in these sections of the store. So whenever you're running an A-B test and it looks like, ah, it's kind of like, we're running this test, it looks like it's about even between having a video and not having a video, why would I do it? You do it because you get this invisible bump in your impressions that's not reflected in the A-B test, and that's real. Localize your store descriptions and screenshots. Again, this one's important, it's cheap, and it's easy to do. You don't have to localize your entire game. It's not a hugely popular sentiment, you're gonna get some customer service complaints that you're not gonna be able to read, but the gist of them is like, you tricked me, but they downloaded the game and they're probably enjoying it. So six one way, half dozen the other. Uh, you can see a one to two percentage point lift in your CVR or conversion rate per geo for description uh, localization. Same thing for your screenshots. It's really easy to do, super simple. I use OneSky. Um, I think they're good. They're certainly fast and cheap. Uh, I only speak English, so I guess that they're doing a great job in terms of translation. I haven't got any complaints. Oh, one last bit. Look at the countries where you're getting the most installs and really only do it there. It's not worth doing it all over the place. You only wanna do it in countries where you're getting a large amount of impressions and installs. A-B test your screenshots. So we saw a 5% install gain here. This is really similar to icons. Uh, don't misrepresent your game, test big variation. You should rotate these every couple of months and retest your old screenshots. Again, like icons, they don't remain old for long. This is a really interesting part of the Google Play Store. So icon, or the screenshots, by far, are the things that matter the least in terms of your creative. And the reason is, if anyone has an Android phone and you open it up and you click through to a page, like you see the feature graphic, you see the preview, 
see the short description, the title, you see what categories are in, and you see the icon. You do not see screenshots. Those are all below the fold. So they're less important in terms of the ability to increase installs or conversions. This is a fun new one uh, that we found out two weeks ago. So even if your game is in portrait, you should add landscape screenshots. Sounds controversial, but again, this is one of the tricks of the Google Play Store. Very similar to what you see with uh, preview videos, there are sections of the store where you will only be featured if you have landscape screenshots, even if your game is in, in portrait mode. Uh, we, even with, with that in mind, we saw a 7% increase in our installs. We got more impressions from the Google Play Store. It's super easy to do. You just package um, one of your portrait screenshots uh, with some landscape art. Bob's your uncle, you're done. So notes on conversion rate, this is the sad part. These go down constantly. People are bored of you and your game immediately. Like almost immediately, you are no longer cool. Just like that. Um, your job is to, to the best of your ability, keep these numbers up. You want to get as many installs in as possible uh, during your open beta period so that you can improve your metrics and actually make some money during open beta as well. The only way to do that is to keep, keep these numbers up. Metadata matters. So I've had a couple conversations with folks who say um, store description, title, don't matter. Uh, you're wrong. So on the left, hi, Punny, I'm talking to you. It's right here in the front row. Um, on the left is the uh, developer console page that lists all the information about the game. So it's title, short description, full description. Um, that, in conjunction with your bundle ID and the update text you use, form the word bank that is used for your keywords. So when people search on the store and your game comes up, it's because they searched a term that's heavily indexed for your game. All those terms come from this page here. So testing your short description is really important. 5% lift of installs with words, super easy. But like everything else on the Google Play Store, there's a catch. So if you're testing this, you not only want to pick the one that is driving the most installs for you, you want to pick the one that also has in keywords that you want to index in. So you have to dance this, care, this careful dance where you're making sure that you're picking the winner, but you're also picking a winner that helps you index strongly in the keywords that you care about. So bundle ID, there's a lot of indications that bundle ID is one of the most important uh, factors in your keyword and metadata. Like the, the items in your actual bundle ID filter through into searchable terms about your game. What a lot of people don't know is once you upload your APK for the first time, that's your bundle ID. Can't change it after that. One and done. So you need to be thoughtful about what you're naming your bundle ID. If you look in URLs on the Google Play Store, you can see people are doing some really cheeky stuff. So you'll see like Minecraft, Tycoon, Pokemon, Fight, whatever. Uh, be careful around terms of service with Google Play. I'm not going to go through the terms of service in detail. Suffice it to say you should read it and know it before you start messing around with your keywords. Because if you're found in violation, your game's going to get taken down. At the very least, your update's going to get rejected from the Google Play Store. So here's the fun part. When you rank in keywords before the Google Play algorithm kicks in, you can see an increase in 50,000 installs over a 30-day period. Period. It's awesome. So getting this right, finding keywords that are not only representative of your game, but also index high in terms of search traffic is super key. And you want to make sure that those are worked in multiple times to all of your metadata without violating terms of service on Google Play. That's really important. Um, and for the love of God, just, just get specific. Like, if you're doing game and free, and you mention those 100 times, unless you have like the most generic, boring game on the planet, it doesn't matter. You can be first rank on all of those. Nobody's going to download your game. Because it bears no relationship to what they were searching for in the first place. When they were searching for game and free, I can almost guarantee they're not looking for a hardcore card battle game. That's not what they want. So the Google algorithm kicks in. The moment's at hand. Let's get some installs. So on the left is what the Google Play Store page looks like. Um, there are all these lists that get populated in the store, and they're populated by your download behavior and what you're doing. When your game is added to those lists one to two weeks after you release an open beta, you get a buttload of installs. That's an industry and scientific term. 
Um, we're talking thousands more installs a day. We went from a couple hundred to seven to 10,000 at our peak. Um, we saw a huge jump in our keyword ranks. So your keyword ranks are driven by not only volume, but velocity. So it's really important. All that metadata stuff we just talked about, that needs to be set up before the algorithm kicks in for your game. Because it's, it creates this virtuous feedback loop, right? So you get all these installs from Google Play that pushes you up on keyword ranks. The keyword ranks and installs drive more installs from Google Play and you get a crazy amount of insults. It's really great when it happens. It's disappointing when it doesn't. You get much faster A-B test completion, so you can A-B test in a day or less. And it doesn't last forever. You got 30 days. So this seems to be the magic number on Google Play for whatever reason. You got 30 days from the moment that this happens, and then the next 30 days are gonna be 50 to 75% less impressions. So you're getting insults, what do you focus on? Average revenue per paying user is, I'm gonna make the argument, the only thing that you should really have your eyeball on. The reason why, you can change it quickly. So average revenue per paying user is fairly straightforward to change. You need to make a, first and foremost, you need to surface offers that are meaningful and valuable to users. If you can't be bothered to surface the awesome thing that you put in the store, don't bother putting it in the store. Nobody is just gonna stumble into your store and find it. Put it in an icon that pulses on the main screen so people know that there's cool stuff to buy. Let them refuse your offer as opposed to just making sure that they ignore it by not going to the store. It's much easier to change than retention. I'm a strong believer that your retention is a reflection on the genre you chose, the art style that the game is in, and your game design. If you're trying to change any of those three things at this stage of the game, it's too late. Make a new game. Your time is much better spent making a new game. I've seen teams go down the rabbit hole trying to fix retention, and they never come out the other side. If they do, they have nothing to show for it. Just wasted time and money. Conversion rates largely capped. I know that some folks in here think that they've got, it's, it's perfect monetization strategy. You're totally gonna like plow through, have a six or 7% conversion rate on a daily basis. It's not gonna happen. Like your early cohorts, maybe four to 6%. And it's great when it happens, but those numbers always come down. One to 3% is the range that you're gonna see for converting users into spenders. Average revenue, average revenue per paying user is the only thing you should be thinking about at this time. So what do you do now? You need to prepare like you've got one shot and making money, because you really do. I mean, this is it. You need to set yourself up so that you're getting as many installs as possible in open beta. You need to work on your store landing page to increase those installs before they actually kick in, and you need to raise your R poo poo. That is the new games as a service. And it's the only one that matters. For the vast majority of people in this room and the vast majority of games, you're not gonna have an R poo that's gonna allow you to spend unlimited money on marketing or continue to operate or afford to operate your game. It's just not gonna happen. And that's not, it has nothing to do with your skills as game developers. Those are things that could be outside of your control, like the genre you've chosen. Like an endless runner with rare exceptions, and I'm sure I'll hear about those rare exceptions during the Q&A, but the exception to the rule is not the vast majority of developers. An endless runner is never, for the vast majority of people, gonna be in a position where you can continue to operate as games as a service. Finally, and this is a really important one, if think about yourself from the Google Play side. So Google's trying to think, well, which games are we gonna feature this week? And they look at Steve's game, and they look at Punny's game. Steve's game, Steve has extensively used the Google Play tool set. He's A-B tested like crazy. He's really optimized his store conversion rate. Punny didn't do any of that. Punny just kind of threw a dead body under the Google Play store and was like, oh, let's see what happens. Steve wins. Steve wins that every time because he's shown effort. And he's shown that he cares about using the store in a way that is meaningful to Google and using the tools that they built. That's it. Does anyone have any questions? No. Oh yeah, um, I won't yell at you. Um, I may be short with you if it's a bad question, though, because there are, there are such things as bad questions. I hope you don't have one. We will know soon. <laughs> we'll know soon, that's right. What's up? Uh, first of all, uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, thanks for coming. Yeah.
kudos for the clickbait title. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. I think of half of the audience here came to prove you wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up? Um, I mean, it's, what you're really saying is that developers should stop trying uh, mobile or? No, uh, um, I'm saying that there's a, there's a finite window to make changes in your game before it gets live, right? Like you, if you're in a fortunate position to get a feature, or even if you're not, you're still gonna get a nice spike of installs in those first 30 days when you're out on Google Play or iOS, right? We've all seen it, you release, and your first 30 days are actually pretty good. Your game needs to be in a position before that happens to extract the maximum value, right? Like the operations, the, the serv operating your game like a service or a business, all of that's gotta happen in test market for you to extract any value at all. Right? If you don't do those things and you wait, you're never going to be in a position to afford uh, to do them once you're live. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I just wanted to add uh, one thing that, sure. I mean, if you're like, of course, one of the top grossing games, uh, it's not that at all. You can keep uh, doing profitable your way. Yeah. But I've seen also some small developers finding some niches where w and while they cannot scale indefinitely, they can do profitable way, uh, That's right. uh, your way. So I would advise looking yeah, for think, small niches as well. I think those things are dependent on your capitalization for marketing. If you have the funds to market, or if you can generate the funds from the game, you should, you should definitely do it. Um, it requires a pretty specialized skill set. Um, and there's, as you said, there's a cap uh, to how long they can do it for and how many installs they can acquire. I mean, it's possible, and there are people in the room who have those types of games, right? They've been able to effectively operate them over a period of time, but they're the exception of the rule as opposed to the rule. The vast majority of people aren't in that spot. Yeah. Thanks. Sure, no problem. Good question, by the way. Hey, what's up? Hey, thanks for the frank talk and actually giving us numbers. Helpful. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious if you have any tricks or tips for iOS. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Get lucky. <laughs> no, so <laughs> iOS is tricky, right? You, you shouldn't be doing test markets there, but you, you have to do user acquisition really to get any scale of users in there, and, and uh, it can be expensive. I've recently tried a pre-order, so if you get featured for a pre-order, I've seen devs quote like 50 to 70,000 pre-registrations for your game, which is pretty rad. The challenge with a pre-order is you can't do a test market. So, hope you don't have any bugs because you're just gonna launch blindly on iOS with no testing with real users. Um, iOS is kind of a different animal. Google built out this, this tool set and it, it's pretty great. iOS is still a great platform. They have really valuable users and a lot of them. They just don't have the same sophistication of, of testing tools. Cool. Cool, thanks for your question. We'll go. Oh, first? Yeah, all right. Oh, sure. Um, I, I just wanted a tiny bit of clarification. So you said when you launched an open beta, um, yep. there was about two weeks before things like index with Google, and then you get like a, a download increase. So that's outside of whatever download increase you would get when you go out of open beta yep. to launch. That's right. Okay. Um, I was wondering if you were seeing um, any significant uh, deviations from one market to another. Like, were there any that particularly stood out for you? Um, and also within I don't, that, I don't understand. Can you ask so, that question? So, for example, way? if you choose to say launch uh, U.S. only, and but then mm -hmm. um, like you go say launch uh, Japan or you launch pick another market, right? Yep. Um, and as you're looking at this data, are you seeing any differences in the drop-off rates and the retention rates? Because yeah, I, uh, Americans are the best. Um. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, I, if anyone's looked at their revenue numbers, mm -hmm. Americans it, are paying the most. They usually retain. In terms of total revenue, revenue or in terms of? Both. In terms of, I mean, it depends. If, you've local, if, you, if you have made your game culturally relevant in Korea and Japan and China, there's an argument that you can make um, that your game is gonna really thrive there, and there's tons of examples of that. But by and large, um, most of the games that I work on really resonate with American audiences. 30 to 40% of the installs I get in open beta are from Americans. 50% mm -hmm. of the revenue I generate are from Americans, and that's, that's pretty consistent with what I see on iOS. Um, on iOS, the exception is China, which has really come roaring into the picture in the past couple of years. Um, both for premium games, they're a great market for premium games, but for the love of God, don't price them like you would for an American. Like, the, there's a currency there, it buys different things in China, it, it just price it accordingly. Mm. Um, 
But yeah, China, China and the U.S. make up the bulk of the revenue I see on iOS. Yeah, because the reason I was curious about that is because the games that we've uh, we've been building games in uh, Japan for almost 20 years now, um, and what we see on the deltas are significantly higher on the Japan side than the U.S. and the apps that I've worked with in the U.S. side right. tend to flop. Well, let me know if you want to operate and make changes on my game in Japan. I'd love to talk to you. <laughs> I'm happy to chat with you. Um, yeah. That's what we're doing. But um, Cool. Just give me your card afterwards. Sure. Thanks. Awesome. Hey, thanks okay. for the talk. Really, yeah. really good. Impressive. No thanks. Oh, I have two questions, actually. Uh -huh. One of them is going to be part advertising. Sorry, I'm, I have to root for my homeboys. So, what do you actually? No, no. But um, what do you okay. actually do for A/B testing? Is it native Google Play tools, or you go like third-party developers? Native Google Play tools. Have you ever so, tried the guys from the outside? Um, I do the cheapest thing possible because I am small and. That is don't. great product yeah. down in Belarus. It's called Split Metrics. All of you guys. Split, Split Metrics. Metrics. Yeah. Yeah. Really, Really, cool. really good guys. You got a Start card up. check it out? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, but actually, I'm, I'm not from these guys. I'm oh, yeah. Right. I am from Belarus. That's why I'm looking <laughs> for my homeboys. Gotcha. All right, cool. <laughs> I'm cool. sure it's trying. But second one actually yeah, is closer. Yeah. You know, I come sure. from esports industry. So perhaps, you know, that the games as a service, if you add a competitive no. feature, <laughs> no. Esports is the worst. <laughs> oh, my God. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Sorry, we got to wrap this up. But holy shit, esports is the worst. Can you elaborate a little bit, please? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's matchmaking based on skill and all of the monetization that allows you to buy things that make you stronger in RPGs can apply because it, it breaks skill-based matchmaking. So instead, you have, to set, you have to sell items that are like aesthetically pleasing. And unless you have a massive user base, which you have to acquire because it's just not that popular a genre, you're never going to do it. All right, sorry, esports are the worst. I'll talk to you outside.